So 20.2a, mean, median, mode, range. This is pretty quick and it's the easiest stuff we do, okay? So we are going to start off with a set of data. This is the set of data we're going to use. And we're going to find the mean of it, the median of it, the mode, the range, and the standard deviation. Actually, two standard deviations. Okay? So, first thing we're going to find is the mean. Now, this part gets really confusing. This is the mathematical notation for finding the mean. There are two different symbols we use to express the mean, and we did learn about this the other day briefly. But when you see the symbol mu, you are talking about the mean of a population. And when you see the symbol x bar, you are talking about the mean of a sample. What's a sample again? A smaller portion of the population, right? Ideally, it's an unbiased representative sample. That's all the stuff we talked about the last couple days. All right, so what this is saying is it's saying to find the mean, you are going to sum up or add up all of the values and then divide by how many there are. That's the fancy way of saying it. Goes on further to explain it a slightly different way. So if I wanted to find the mean of this information, what would I do? I would take 90 plus 93 plus 78 plus 88 plus 90 plus 83 and I would divide by what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and let's see what that gives me on my calculator. 90 plus 93 plus 78 plus 88 plus 90 plus 83 divided by 6. My mean is 87. Does my mean need to actually be a list, be a number that's on my list? Doesn't have to be a number on the list. Can it be a number that's on the list? Yes. Does it have to be a nice number? No, because you're dividing by something, you might actually get a decimal for your mean. Okay? All right, median. What's the median again? <coughs> Whatever's in the middle, right? Now, there's a trick, because I could write my data down in one order, and she could write her data down in a different order, and we would have different ones in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. So how do we make sure that I have the same median as her? You have to first write the numbers typically from smallest to largest. I guess you could do largest to smallest, but who goes there? So what's the smallest number on my list? Next smallest number. Next one? 88. Next one? 90. And then 90 again. And then what? 93. Is that it? One, two, three, four, five, six. That's it. Now, sometimes your mean is super easy to find. Sometimes you have to do a little bit of work for it. So to find what's in the middle, I'm going to cross off one off each other end. And then another one. And if I had another term, I would have a number nicely in the middle, wouldn't I? But in this case, I don't have a number nicely in the middle. I have two numbers in the middle. So how do I find the median if I have two numbers in the middle? You find the average of them. You add them up and divide by two. That's finding the average of two numbers, right? What does that get me? 89. Is 89 actually a number on my data list? No. Nope. Is that okay? That's okay. Mode. What does mode mean? Most. Most popular is the way I like to think about it. It's the one that happens the most on your list. Now, there are three different scenarios. You could have no mode if all data is represented the same amount.
So if I have a list of five numbers and each number is represented once, I have no mode. Nothing's more popular than the others. Another way to think about that, if I have a list of five numbers and each of them is listed twice, I still have no mode because they're all equally represented. Does that make sense? Okay. I could have one, one mode. That happens if only one number is repeated more than the others. That's how I get one mode. I believe that's the circumstance I have going on in this particular data set. I have one mode. There is the potential of having several modes. That's when I like to say that there is a tie for popularity. So let's say I have five numbers, all of which are represented once, and I have two numbers that each occur twice then I have two modes because those two are more popular than everybody else. Does that make sense? If I have five numbers that are all represented twice and I have two numbers that are each represented three times, that's the same scenario. They are still more popular than everybody else. That gets me more than one mode. Okay? Questions there? All right, what's our mode for this set of data? 90 because it's the only number that occurs twice. Everything else only occurs once. Okay? Range is the easiest thing to find. Easiest. It's the difference between the highest and lowest numbers. So the way you find it, you take the highest number on your list or the biggest, greatest number of your list, and you subtract the lowest. What's the highest or the greatest number on my list? 93 minus the lowest. What's the lowest? And 93 minus 78 is 15. That means all of my numbers are within a span of 15 numbers, or within a range of 15. Questions about any of those? Mean, median, mode, range. You're wishing that was your quiz tomorrow, right? Okay. Standard deviation is a little bit different, which is why it's kind of got its own page here. Okay. Now. What Ms. Armstrong did is she took the process of calculating the standard deviation and put it into a chart for us to be able to organize our work. Now, does that mean you need to use this chart every time you find your standard deviation? No. You can make your own version of the chart, or you don't even have to draw a chart, but you do have to show me some work as to how you calculate your standard deviation because I know you can't do it in your head. Okay? So, first off, Sample standard deviation is notated by the letter S. We talked about that a little bit the other day. Um, most of what we do will be referring to a sample set of data. For example, these are the same six numbers that we had on the other side. I'll highlight them again to show that they're the same. And if I said that these were a sample of our most recent test scores, for example, then there's one way that I calculate the standard deviation. If I change it to say that that's not a sample, but that's the entire population, then it changes my information from being a survey to being a census. And there's a slight difference in how you calculate the standard deviation in that case. So we're going to start off with sample, okay? Um, and again, this is the way it looks mathematically that's really confusing and it kind of gives you a headache to look at, right? So that's why this chart comes in handy. We're going to interpret that information so that it's more reasonable. So when she has the first column here, the first column, what I'm going to do, doesn't matter if my numbers in, are in order or not, but I'm going to list all of the numbers in my data set. Uh, 90, 93, 78, 88, What's next? 90 and 83. That's step one. So far, so good? Okay. Step two, 
Look at the heading of the column. It says take x sub i. Well, isn't that the numbers that I just listed here? It says take those numbers and subtract x bar. What's x bar? The mean. Didn't we calculate that on the other side? She has the calculation there again. But the mean we found out to be 87. So if you haven't found the mean already, you have to find the mean in order to find the standard deviation. So I'm going to take 90, and I'm going to subtract the mean, which is 87. What does that give me? 3. Now I'm going to take 93, and I'm going to subtract the mean, which is 87. What does that give me? 6. Now 78 minus the mean is what? Negative 9. What about 88 minus the mean? 1. What about 90 minus the mean? Uh, 87 is 3. And 83 minus the mean is what? Negative 4. Anything terribly difficult so far? So we have completed this portion of the formula. Okay, now we're going to do the next portion by adding the squared to it. So I'm going to take my results right here, 3, 6, negative 9, 1, 3, and negative 4, and I'm going to square them. So 3 squared is what? 9. 6 squared is 36. Negative 9 squared is 81. 1 squared is 1. 3 squared is 9. And negative 4 squared is 16. So now I haven't just done that. I've done that whole portion of my formula. Now I have this something in front, which means that I'm going to take all those squares right there, and I'm going to add them all up. So let's see. 9 plus 36 plus 81 plus 1 plus 9 plus 16 gives me 152. So far, so good? Now I've completed... that whole portion of the formula. So what's left? I have to divide by n minus 1, and I have to take the square root of it. Well, what is n minus 1? n minus 1 is the number of terms, or the number of data values that I added up, minus 1. So I'm going to take 152, and I need to divide that by how many numbers did I have on my list? 6 minus 1. So 5, and I'm going to square root it. And that's going to get me my standard deviation. Now this says sigma here. This should say S, not sigma, just as an FYI. So let's see. The square root of 152 divided by parentheses 6 minus 1, or you could just say the 5 at that point. So S is approximately equal to 5.5. I'm going to go to two digits past the decimal. And on your homework, you can go to two digits past the decimal. Standard deviation is almost always an ugly number because it involves division and a square root, and it just makes things ugly. Okay? Was that too hard? It's not super hard. It's just obviously more time-consuming than the other measurements we do. Now, I said this was the sample standard deviation, correct? What happens when it's no longer a sample, but it's a population. There is one component that changes, and the change is right here. Instead of dividing by 6 minus 1, I instead divide by 6. So I would still do all of this stuff and come up with my 152. And again, do you need to write out every single thing not the way I have it here, but I do expect to see some work as to how you're getting various places. So I would still get my 152. This time I wouldn't divide it by 6 minus 1. I would just divide it by 6 
and I would take the square root of that. And it makes my standard deviation slightly different. Square root of 152 divided by 6, 5.03. Why is my standard deviation slightly lower than it was up here? Because if my data is representing a population, then I have an entire census worth of data, don't I? A census of data is always going to be more accurate than a sample of data, which is why your population standard deviation should be smaller than your sample standard deviation. Okay. All right. Here comes your homework. Happy studying.